Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you guys are new here. Now, I wish this video was clickbait, but it is not. Yes, I just got back from leaving my aquariums for over a week, completely unattended by me. Ooh, yeah, the now, in today's video, I wanted to go into in detail all the products I used to keep my fish alive, some preventative things I did before I left to make sure everything ran smooth, as well as doing a little bit of cleanup for some stuff that might have happened while we were gone. But before we move right into that, I want to go ahead and give you an update on some of the tanks a week after not seeing them for a while because the majority of the tanks did really well. We had no fish deaths. Everything ended up pretty perfectly except for one little mini disaster we're going to get to later. But I'm going to throw you over to some of the other tanks real quick. Let's take a look at those guys, get a quick update on those tanks, and then we'll come back here and talk about that disaster behind me. For example, when I came home to the seven gallon mini pond, there's actually a whole bunch of new baby fish in here. It's very hard for you to see, uh, but these are live bearing guppies that are in here. Um, basically just a whole bunch of colorful guppies, super lively. But if you look closely, there's a whole bunch of new baby fish in here, which is awesome. We always love to see new baby fish. The adult guppies in here are also doing really, really well. Even the plants back here are doing absolutely amazing. Especially this pothos plant, tons of new growth and it's still continuing to trail. The 15 gallon community tank is still doing great as well. We did have some plant growth die off, if that makes sense. Um, my java fern in here just is not doing too hot. As you can see, it keeps producing some little yellow leaves or its leaves keep dying, whatever, they're annoying. But other than that, all the fish in here are doing really, really well and the majority of the plants in here are thriving as well. I mean, the freshwater plant tank is looking awesome as well. All the fish in here are doing super good. Here we didn't lose a single fish, which can sometimes be tricky when you're using an automatic fish feeder, which is what I ran all these tanks on. Sometimes some of the bigger fish can eat the food, leaving very little for the little fish. Uh, it's just a little harder to control feedings via an auto feeder. However, it looks like we had no issues in here. Even little Cory cats in the back, you can't really see them, but they're back there. They are still doing good as well. The koi pond did great. Honestly, I cleaned the filter before we left and then I just left it alone kind of like this. I did have someone feed the fish, I think twice while we were gone for the entire week. So it is time for them to get a little bit more food. I'm gonna do that real quick. But this pond is very self-sustaining, at least when it is, you know, a week or less. Um, I try to clean the filters about once a week just because they do get gunked up so quick. There's a lot of fish in here, as you can see. But other than that, I'm gonna clean the filters right after this, and the pond's looking great. Fish are happy, fish are super healthy, plants are growing, and that's really all you can ask for in a koi pond. These guys are doing awesome. So as you saw, most of the tanks did really, really well. And mainly I credit to that automatic fish feeders. I bought a whole bunch of these. This one right here is by Torlum or Torlom, I don't really know. Um, but I have a whole bunch of different brands, sizes, whatever. In reality, an automatic fish feeder is an automatic fish feeder. Actually, in the next few videos, we should have a review for a specific brand new type of automatic fish feeder bug. But that's gonna be in a later video. But I credit most of my success to these automatic fish feeders because I didn't have someone come and feed the fish. There's a lot of room for error with stuff like that. So I figured it's best to just stick with the automatic fish feeders, let them do their thing. Now, another thing that was super important to me, at least in my two saltwater tanks, was evaporation. This tank behind me has an automatic top-off system and it just did its thing. I filled the automatic top-off reservoir all the way up and it lasted, I believe, eight days, no problem. As water evaporated from the tank, the system automatically topped it off, so we had no issues there. If you don't have an automatic top-off system in a tank like this, I would highly recommend it. Now, on my other saltwater tank, the top is a lot more enclosed and it holds in evaporation a lot better. So actually, that tank didn't get topped off at all and it only lost about a quarter of an inch of water, which really didn't change the salinity much at all. So it goes to show this big open top aquarium evaporated up to probably over eight gallons of water over the course of eight days, probably around a gallon a day. But the other 36 gallon tank, because it is sealed in so well, really evaporated almost nothing a day. Another thing I made sure to do is water changes and clean the tanks before I actually left. I made sure everything was in perfect condition before I left to hopefully prolong uh, that cleanliness until I get home. However, that didn't quite work for my 120 gallon reef tank. Without further ado, I think it's time. Let's drop the bomb and let's take a look at what happened to this tank while I left it completely unattended for over a week. Now, I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera, but well, you can definitely see it. The fish are all fine. 
Most of the coral are fine, but the glass is absolutely covered in algae. We also had a big outbreak of the rose bubble tip anemones. Now, before I left, I tried to remove as many as I could. However, they just grow and spread so fast. As you can see, we have some popping up in unwanted places. Now, for the most part, the other corals are doing well, although it's a little hard to see them at the moment. The sump had no issues. The protein skimmer cup did not fill up very much, and the filter sock didn't even overflow. I cleaned both of these before I left, and I uh, just went ahead and cleaned them when I got back. But now, this algae on the glass is gonna be one of the main issues. And of course, because it has been about a week, it's time to do a water change to, you know, get this tank clean and back to where it's supposed to be. But before we get into cleaning that tank, I wanna show you two more things that I think also help credit me to a little bit of success in this journey, and that is these two things right here. Well, you can't see this. These are not sponsored, by the way. Um, I bought all this stuff with my own money. The first thing is gonna be these Wi-Fi smart plugs. There they are right there. You can probably see them there better. Without getting crazy in depth, with these little plugs, you plug it into a socket, you plug your aquarium supplies into it, and you can turn it on and off through your phone. Super convenient when you're on vacation. You can automate stuff like lights, so you don't have to worry about stuff like that while you're away. I find them super useful just for lights in general. The other thing is a good Wi-Fi camera. This one is by Arlo. I have some by Ring, and I also have used one by Wise in the past. Now these are great just for the peace of mind of checking in on your tanks while you're gone. I have a lot of time and money invested into this reef tank and if something were to happen, like the return pump were to stop working or something like that, this would allow me to know instantly via the live stream. And then ideally if something were to go wrong, I'd be able to remotely do it through someone who's in town and able to access the tank while I'm unavailable. Luckily I've never had any issues like that happen, however, these cameras offer me a lot of peace of mind, and in reality, they're pretty cheap. This camera set was a little bit more expensive, however, the Ring ones and the Wise ones are really, really cost effective. I'll leave links to all those down below. So now I think it's time we grab the Flipper Magnetic Aquarium Cleaner, also not sponsored, and get to work on this algae. I really don't wanna have to dig in there by hand. I'm hoping the scraper on the algae scrubber, or the magnet, whatever that thing's called, uh, will just get this tough algae off, but it has been building up for like eight or nine days at this point, so. Ugh, I'm gonna throw you guys on a time lapse and just wish me luck on this one. And now that the tank is looking a thousand times better, it's definitely time we get a water change going here very soon. Uh, once again, the fish are all doing good. Most of the corals are doing good. It's just that algae was crazy. But I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the deep cleaning, scrub down these wave makers, get a little water change going. Once again, I will throw you guys to a time lapse so you don't have to watch through an entire water change process. It's a little boring, but into the time lapse we go. Now that the tank maintenance is all done, the aquarium is really starting to come back together. It looks so much better than it did, and that's really the beauty of these tanks is that they clean up nicely. Really, that didn't take too long. It was a simple water change was all it needed, and it went from a two to like an eight, let's be honest, uh, really fast. Um, some of the corals are still opening up. However, I'm sure in the next couple hours they will fully recover from when I had to work around them I was in there scrubbing some algae and that just pisses the corals off sometimes However, they will make a full recovery with no issues and just like that here we are concluding everything So in reality this little trip away from the tanks went very well I have left tanks in the past before and come home to dead fish and stuff like that for me personally though The best tip I can give you guys if you plan on traveling with multiple aquariums or just one aquarium is to try to automate it as much as possible Simple things like automating when your lights turn on and off or even in the saltwater tanks You can invest in a good automatic top off which will always keep your salinity right if you don't have one already And then of course automating feeding always makes things better, but now that the cleanup is done it is smooth sailing for these tanks for the next couple weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the little aftermath, the little dirty side of the aquarium hobby that you don't see too often. I mean, who wants to show their disgusting, nasty tank on YouTube for everyone to see? But you know, it is what it is. It's back to clean and happy and healthy. And luckily, none of my other tanks had anything near as problematic as that was. Um, I'm not sure if it's just the crazy, powerful reef lighting or what, 
but algae just grows on that glass so fast. If you remember, I used to have an automatic glass cleaner that would automatically clean the, the glass. It was kind of like a Roomba, but for the glass. Um, that didn't last very long. It was super loud. It was very clunky, very outdated. Um, hopefully though, in the next few months, maybe hinting at another video here, uh, we'll be able to see an upgraded version of an automatic aquarium glass cleaner. I'm holding out for it. I'm hoping it comes to fruition, but we will just have to see. However, that is going to be just about it for this video. Thank you guys once again so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Good. Bye.